Horizon Forbidden West. This game came out just two days ago, and it has been met with pretty positive fanfare. Both the meta score and the user score are pretty high up. The game's gorgeous, and a lot of people are having a lot of fun playing this game. Most agree that it's a big step up from uh, Zero Dawn. And yeah, it's certainly been a celebratory moment for Guerrilla. Though on the publisher side of things, on Sony's side of things, the way this game, the pricing model has been presented, has drawn some criticism. And I want to take a look at that today and give you first a bit of a background on some of the controversies surrounding this game's pricing and then let you know what certain people discovered starting with the announcement of horizon zero dawn 2 as this video games chronicle article called it coming to ps5 is forbidden west this was announced on june 11th 2020 and then Alongside that, it was announced that the game was going to be cross-generation. People initially assumed if there's going to be a sequel, it's probably going to be a PS5 exclusive. Turns out, as of September 16th, 2020, it was made known that this would be a cross-generation title. And indeed, it did come out on both PS4 and PS5. And at that point, people wondered, what is the pricing model going to be like? Are we going to be paying $60 or $70? Well, on the PlayStation blog post here, they talked about how they're happy to announce PS4 versions of some of our exclusives, including Marvel, Spider-Man, Miles Morales, Sackboy, A Big Adventure, and Horizon Forbidden West. And alongside that, they said this, the PS4 digital versions of launch games include a free upgrade on both PS5 consoles while the PS4 disc versions of these games include a free upgrade on the PS5 with Ultra HD Blu-ray disc drive. Basically, the implication being that regardless of where you purchase this game, you're going to get both versions, essentially is what they're saying. And given that last-gen games tend to be priced at $60, the implications seem to be that you're going to be spending $60, and for that money, you're going to get both versions guaranteed without having to spend extra and scrolling down here you'll find some of the launch day games that they listed and they did specifically specify launch games include a free upgrade on both ps5 consoles and so i guess the argument could be made that technically horizon uh, forbidden west isn't listed here but then you look at this washington post interview where horizon forbidden west and miles morales were brought up as ps5 exclusives that actually aren't exclusive at all they are cross-generation and when asked about that jim ryan in regards to pricing said no one should be disappointed the ps5 versions of those games are built from the ground up to take advantage of the ps5 feature set of those games referring to to all of these titles here, Miles Morales and Forbidden West, and we have an upgrade path for PS4 users to get the PS5 versions for free. It's about people having choice. I'm really quite pleased about the situation. But then on September 2nd, 2021, Horizon Forbidden West drew some backlash when it was announced that only the $80 Digital Deluxe Edition includes both console versions. You have to get the more expensive version if you want to get that free next-gen upgrade, which is a crucial aspect of this game, given that PS5s are kind of impossible to find right now. So a lot of people are going to be playing this game on PS4, and so forcing those people to shell out extra money for the chance to eventually upgrade to PS5 and play the game on PS5 was just a really really bad look and this is a scheme that EA and 2K pulled with their sports games where you had to purchase the more expensive edition the Mamba edition or the deluxe edition of FIFA in order to have that free quote unquote upgrade path so that didn't go down well and the backlash was bad enough that eventually Sony and PlayStation did backtrack on this saying that last year we made a commitment to deliver free upgrades for our cross-gen launch titles which included Horizon Forbidden West. So by their own admission here they said yeah this is what we said we implied Horizon Forbidden West would have a free next-gen upgrade path and that it wouldn't be locked behind a more expensive edition. We never said anything like that. So players who purchase Horizon Forbidden West on PlayStation 4 will be able to upgrade to the PlayStation 5 version for free. Which finally brings us to today where they technically, in terms of the exact wording of this quote, fulfill this, but the way they're doing it clearly incentivizes people to pay more and to not be made aware to buy what is essentially the cheaper version of the same package. You can buy Horizon Forbidden West on PlayStation 4 for $60 and get the free upgrade, or you can buy it on PlayStation 5 for $70 
and have access to the PS4 version as well. They're literally the same package. One is sold at 60, one is sold at 70. This was something that was pointed out by Richard Hoek here. Folks leapt on me for my tweet on this a week ago, but there is no defending this kind of business model from the Sony PlayStation folks. They appear to be deliberately confusing the price point in an effort to steal $10 from the uninformed duplicity and greed. The tweet he was referring to is this one from February 7th, 2022. He highlighted this Polygon article that says, save $10 on Horizon Forbidden West by buying the PS4 version, and then says Sony is light years behind Xbox on the generational transition. And honestly, in cases like this, it starts to smell of duplicity and greed because he noticed that if you go to the PlayStation Store, you'll find that at the forefront of Horizon Forbidden West listing is the $70 version. And I can actually show you this myself. If you go to the store page right now, you'll see that at the very top, it says $70 for both PS5 and PS4 at a cart. You have to scroll down to see that there is actually a $60 standard version that basically is a PS4 purchase with a digital upgrade to the PS5 version. But then right next to it is literally the exact same package, Horizon Forbidden West, PS5, and PS4. $70 if you're buying it on PS5 where it's already upgraded, but then you can downgrade to PS4 as well because that comes included. This I don't know why there needs to be two separate editions when there clearly should just be the one or the pricing across both should be exactly the same, $60 and $60. This goes doubly true when they seem to backtrack on the idea of having people pay more to do a next-gen upgrade for a game that they heavily implied would be essentially $60 with a free upgrade to PS5. They straight up said moving forward, PlayStation first party exclusive cross-gen titles will offer a $10 digital upgrade option from PS4 to PS5. Moving forward being the key term term here, but now we're seeing a $70 version with a $60 standard edition if you kind of dive a little deeper, but what's being highlighted is the $70 version that is exactly the same as the $60 version. It's just very bizarre, and I can see why this would draw a lot of criticism. I mean, if a company like EA did this, they'd get lambasted for this. Obviously, Sony has better optics because they release really good games, and Horizon Forbidden West, you know, is certainly worth $70 more than any EA Sports title or any 2K Sports game but it doesn't change the fact that Sony said one thing, promised one thing, and now they're engaging in a way that technically upholds the letter of the promise that they made because they're offering a $60 version, but by putting at the forefront the $70 version that's the same as the $60 version, it means that those who aren't aware that there's a cheaper version that is exactly the same will likely end up spending $10 more than usual. Like, if you're like me and, you know, like many gamer enthusiasts who follow news, maybe this won't be a big deal and, you know, you'll be able to know uh, from the outset to just buy the $60 version, but keep in mind that Plenty of PlayStation 5 users are more sort of casual gamers or people who don't necessarily follow all the news. And so a lot of people are going to end up spending $10 more than they should have because Sony decided to go with this form of pricing scheme and presentation that can be seen as deceptive. Deceptive or at the very least misleading enough that Richard Hoek, who is a lawyer, has said that he believes this could open up the possibility of a class action lawsuit, stating, quote, I do think that this kind of thing could present possibility of a class action lawsuit. Many individual states, not to mention jurisdictions outside the U.S., have deceptive trade practices statutes that allow for civil actions, and it wouldn't be surprising to see a request for plaintiffs coming from a class action firm on something like this, though it will depend on those firms' analysis of what they think they can get out of a possible payday. All Sony and PlayStation have to do is backtrack on this and just list $60 versions for both PS5 and PS4, no matter where you purchase it, you're going to get both versions anyway. So why the disparate price point? It just seems like Sony's trying to sneak in a way to just get a little extra money, an extra $10 from unaware folks. And I have to agree, it does seem kind of shady and deceptive manipulative and misleading, especially after what Jim Ryan said here about how he doesn't believe people will be disappointed. We have an upgrade path for PS4 users to get the PS5 versions for free, which is technically true if you like read the letter of the law. It's like he never said that the 
PS5 version wouldn't be sold at $70. He just said those who buy it, those who buy the game on PlayStation 4 will get a free upgrade to PS5. But it still feels like a lie by omission, like they knew exactly what they were implying but didn't say it outright so they could pull this scheme off and then be able to say, well, if you read the letters closely, if you read the exact word choice, technically we did uphold our end of the deal, but you know, that's that's still not a, a good way to do it. At the very least, I wanted to put that out there as a PSA, but I also do think this isn't a way to do things, and if this were, again, EA or any other company like Ubisoft, I think they get lambasted for it. I am gonna hold all companies to the same standards when it comes to these kinds of things. I think uh, Sony needs to change course on this. But that aside though, many people agree the game is great. It is absolutely worth getting at some point. Just save yourself a bit of money, get the $60 version. It's literally no different from the $70 standard edition you buy on PlayStation 5. And according to Video Games Chronicle, you can only see the $60 version on a browser. If you try to view the games listing on a PlayStation 5 console, users are only given the option to purchase the PS5 version of the game for $70 or the Digital Deluxe Edition for $80. I don't know how true this is since I already own the game. The listing just gives me both versions and tells me, hey, select which version you want to download. So I cannot see this on my end, but you know, feel free to confirm in the comments if you haven't purchased the game yet. If this is true, if on the PS5 you can't see the $60 version listing, if, it, if you can only see the $70 version, in which case that would only add further to the misleading aspect to this, to the potentially deceptive aspect to all of this. So just keep all of that in mind, save yourself a bit of money, and Sony and PlayStation don't do this. No company should do this. And I'm calling this out because I don't want to normalize something like this, a business scheme like this where other companies will jump to if uh, they see that nobody seems to be paying attention to the fact that the same version of the same game or the same package is being offered at two different price points in a nonsensical manner with the more expensive edition being offered as the premier package or at the very least being making the headlines of the Horizon Forbidden West listings on your uh, PlayStation storefront or on the browser PlayStation store. So there you have it, folks. That's everything you need to know about some of the criticism surrounding how Horizon Forbidden West is being sold and my take on it. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are. How big of a deal do you think this is? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.